Trevor, Trevor Withers, and I live locally here in, or well, just on the outskirts of St Albans. Um, travel over to Harpenden regularly to be here on the YWAM base, the Oval. I was very fortunate to have a wonderful boys comprehensive school that had woodworking um, rooms and three metalwork rooms, a couple of art rooms and a dedicated pottery and I loved going on the wheel and I'd go up there and really enjoy throwing uh, and making things. I love the mess, um, I love the fact that um, it was sort of machinery involved but it was fairly basic. You just got the wheel going with your foot, you know, kicking it and the wheel went round, throw the clay on and you just have a fun time making things. Actually Jill, a good friend, uh, we became friends um, working in a little office uh, up here on the Oval. And I gradually got to know her as she sat alongside me and uh, we worked on different creative projects together, producing materials. One day we were just chatting as you do over lunch or coffee or whatever and she said, oh, I love ceramics. And she described it, you know, um, pottery. And I said, oh, yeah, I used to love making things at school. And we decided that it would be fun to do some pottery together. Jill said, well, I, th I think we need a space to set it up in. So we had a, a chat to the, the site guy up here and he found us a little room in the factory, the building that we're in now. So we set to, cleared it out, took the carpet up, painted the floor and uh, bought the wheel and the kiln over and it sat there waiting for us to come in and we still didn't create the space because somehow creative things are sort of not important. And Jill got a bit fed up with the fact that we weren't getting in there regularly. She said, Trevor, I think you've got to find a space in your diary. We just invited people in. And people that were walking past the window would look in and we'd say, oh, come in, come in. And it just grew and flourished. And different people came in, made things, enjoyed doing it. We'd have conversations with them. I had met Trevor, he uh, used to have an office here in the property and he told me about the pottery um, so I came down to check it out and see what they're about. I came to have a cup of tea and chat with them and catch up with, with them here. I didn't really have much thought to actually create anything, I was more wanting to be in the, the community environment space. Um, my background is in performance arts and so I majored in dance. The atmosphere that Jill and Trevor create is always one of warmth and acceptance. So I think the way that they run the pottery, the way that they embrace people as they walk through the door in a, in a, a very warm way is just lovely. Um, several people tried to say to us, well, you could make things and sell them. But that isn't what we wanted to do. Um, I'd been in business um, for the first half of my life. I'd sort of done that. We just wanted a fun space without the pressure of having to create things that were good enough to sell or we wanted to sell. Just a fun space for people to come and chill out, relax and enjoy having a cup of tea, painting, painting some spots or a flower on a cup or having a go at throwing on the wheel, learning how to do that and just relaxing really, just enjoying themselves. The first, I have no any interest on it. <laughs> I was just because uh, I needed to help the pottery to do something in the high, uh, in the secondary school. So I joined them trying to help because I never done it in my life, and I didn't know how powerful the uh, the creation, the creativity is behind the pottery. We get invited to go and run some retreat days with the local schools work team and it's wonderful to see there how these youngsters really enjoy making things with clay. They're quite focused and sometimes stressed trying to get their marks up. It's just a, a fun relaxing activity and that in itself I think brings life and health and well-being a sense of complete identity for those individuals that it's not all about their academic achievement. We always had a kettle from day one, uh, <clears throat> bought some milk in, made coffees and teas, um, and just invited anybody that wanted to come in to come in and watch what we were doing or have a go. Well, one particular girl who stood on the threshold of the door and almost refused to come in, 
because she said, I'm not really creative, I'm not artistic, I can't really do this. Then a few weeks later, she was coming in fairly regularly, painting. And we noticed that um, some paints had gone and brushes had gone. At first. She so loves doing it, she's taken some home. I said she could take some home and um, paint them at home. And that was a very restoring thing for her because she'd been told that she wasn't creative. She believed that she couldn't design things and paint things. It, it was just great to see. And you could see her just rise out of herself as her self-belief was restored um, and her creative expression through painting um, was enabled. So those little glimpses, I think, gave us hope that what we were doing um, was sort of on the right track. We're here to have fun, we're here to enjoy, we're here to laugh. That's what we're about. It doesn't really matter what the end product is. It doesn't really matter how good it looks even. Um, it's about how we feel in the process of, of making something and sit and play with clay. So there's quite often I will come in and I'll be on the wheel and at the end of an hour I still haven't actually created anything. I'm really glad that more of the creative arts in general are being seen to be a real help to people who are struggling with depression, anxiety, um, loneliness, sleeplessness, and the pottery is definitely in that category of a, a creative therapy. When you do pottery, you find something new in your life or some new ideas of who, uh, who you are, who God is. It's amazing what making something with your hands just takes you out of your head, out of all those thoughts that are tumbling around. You focus on what you're doing and it is quite relaxing, quite distressing. Whatever you make, if you want to, we'll put it in the kiln and fire it. You can decorate it and it's just for you to, to have some fun and have something to take home that you've made, that you're sort of proud of. And I feel like God doesn't rush with us. His perspective on being productive is very different to what we understand and therefore taking the time to even just watch the clay become what it wants to become. <laughs> when I'm throwing, you have to get your clay centred on the wheel. If it wobbles about all over the place, you can't make anything with it. You know, God says, uh, I am the potter, you are the clay. Uh, and often when we're moulding and shaping things, I, I might say to people, well, actually, it's really, really interesting, is that, that sometimes we're quite resistant to what we feel would be best for us or we should be doing. We sort of hold back or push back and sometimes the clay feels a bit like that. My prayer is that I would stay like wet clay. I felt about God's character as, as my shaper and reshaper. So what hinders us from growing is probably the number of people that we have available to host the space. And we're gradually developing that team based on the fact that many people who enjoy coming then want to spend more time here. We're just doing what we know how to do. And I think the way that we'd hopefully grow might be to multiply the idea. I definitely think if, if there are people who are looking for an environment where they want to be somewhere that they can relax and enjoy being creative. If there's, if there's stress in your life, then this is a great place to come and be for an hour. <laughs> Actually, I'm kept stable by the fact that I have this space and can create something which is very therapeutic for me, very helpful for me. So when things get a bit challenging, um, then this little oasis is really, really helpful. I really enjoy the company of the people that come here and the little team that supports this. So it's a safe place for me to come and have conversations with them and with others who gather here. And I feel very comfortable doing that. Because of my belief that each of us is created to be creative, I think that many of us miss quite a large proportion of our lives in which we could be much more fulfilled than we are because we don't find what we want to be creative with. So my encouragement would be, think about what it is that you enjoy doing, what you enjoy doing it with as far as creativity is concerned, 
and who you might do it with. Your tribe, if you like, the people that are gonna help you flourish in what it is that you enjoy doing. Thank you.